Thank you for listening to my daddy's podcast. Hey, don't let these tears fool you. It's all dog around this mug. I'm good. <laughs> Hey, what's going on, Who That Nation? It is yours truly, TJ Jones. And yes, I am the host of the State of the Saints podcast. Thank you so much for checking out the State of the Saints podcast, where we talk New Orleans Saints. And I really do appreciate your time. This is the second time we're actually going live uh, on today. It is uh, Monday, uh, March 18th, 2024. And, uh, you know, last live, we talked a little bit about a uh, defensive end Chase Young visiting the New Orleans Saints. Uh, but on this edition, we're going to be talking about Chase Young signing with the New Orleans Saints. And um, I have some up-to-date information, uh, what was given to me uh, after I went off the the air <laughs> uh, talking uh, about the New Orleans Saints that I wanted to uh, give to everyone. Um, but thank you so much for being here. Uh, thank you for all of those that checked out the live that we did uh, before. Uh, it was the largest streamed um episode of the state of saints podcast ever we got up to about 1500 people at one time which is absolutely incredible if you think about where this show started and uh to have the capability of doing something like that is almost extremely humbling uh shouts out to everybody that uh that constantly uh checks out the episodes uh shouts out to those that are new uh to the podcast uh shouts out to the haters out there that wish they could do what i'm doing but can't <laughs> but anyway um, I want to talk a little bit about, uh, you know, some of the things that have transpired. Uh, Chase Young signs with the New Orleans Saints, uh, one year, $13 million, $13 million uh, guaranteed. Uh, this is a huge addition for the New Orleans Saints. Uh, looking at the stats for Chase Young uh, throughout his career, uh, he, he came into the league in 2020. Of course, we know about the, the whole pandemic draft. Uh, he, he came in in 2020 at seven and a half sacks. He was the defensive rookie of the year. Uh, he had a little bit of some setback. Uh, 2021, he had a, a sack and a half. He missed quite a few games there. Didn't have a sack in 2022. Uh, had five sacks in 2023. And uh, also uh, adding uh, a little bit to the, for the 49ers. So he ended up with seven and a half. So matching uh, his best as a rookie uh, with seven and a half sacks between playing for the Commanders and the 49ers. And of course, with last time we seen Chase Young on the field, uh, he was playing in the Super Bowl. Now, the 49ers did not get it done, uh, but he did uh, make an impact. Uh, he, he was on the field uh, making, uh, you know, being disruptive, uh, doing some of the things that we all can appreciate. And, uh, you know, I appreciate, uh, you know, the Saints doing what they can to try to get a guy with this type of talent inside of the building. Now, I got a little bit of a sound bite. Uh, Chase Young um, talked to the members of the press uh, after he signed with the New Orleans Saints. And um, the first question that was asked, uh, shouts out to J.D. John DeShazer, he asked the first question, uh, why the New Orleans Saints? And this was Chase Young's response. Um, just a culture, man, uh, just a tradition. Um, you know, just uh, Saint is one of those um, places that, uh, you know, a winning culture. Um, and, you know, that's what, uh, that's what I wanted to, um, you know, be around. And, uh, you know, I feel like this was a place for me. All right. So as you can see, he's pretty excited about being with the New Orleans Saints. Uh, you know, he's a pretty uh, even killed guy. He's been like that, like all the time. Anytime you see him, it's pretty much him. Uh, and he also talked a little bit about some of the hardships. And I'm pretty sure some Saints fans out here, they're kind of skeptical because, you know, of the injury history. Right. Some of the things that uh, kind of stunted his growth as a, a, a defensive force. But he's uh, aware of that, and uh, this is what he said to the media. Um, you know, injuries definitely, like, you know, hinder um, a, a few things, but uh, it's all good. It's all about the process, um, you know, all about the journey. Um, you know, I know what I can do, and, uh, you know, 
I'm a man of God. He still gives me opportunities to prove it. So we're here. All right. So he's not allowing the injuries to hinder him. Uh, he's still very, very confident. Uh, you know, in his abilities. And, uh, you know, I, I don't see a reason why not. I mean, he's still uh, pretty young. I mean, his his whole entire career is ahead of him. He's only 24 years old. And, uh, you know, he got a birthday coming up uh, next month. So he'll be 25. So he's still young, man. He's still got a, a lot left in the tank. And, you know, the Saints signing him to a one-year deal, one-year $13 million. This is more of a prove-it deal uh, for uh, Chase Young. Um Something similar to what I seen, uh, you know, something like a, a Davenport or the Davion Clowney had. Uh, so this is what, you know, the Saints feel comfortable with. And, you know, due to his injury history, uh, I don't see a problem with that. Now, here's what I heard. OK, I'm going I'm to I'm gonna let everybody know. I'm trying to get enough people in here. Uh, actually, everybody hit the like button in the meantime. This is what I heard, like um, getting off uh, the live stream. You know, the one that I did um, when, you know, I was talking a little bit about him signing with the New Orleans Saints. Now, for those that don't know what I'm talking about, I encourage you to check out the last episode. But since you're here, I'll go ahead and give you a little bit of a synopsis of what I'm talking about. Now, um, I was preparing to go live around three o'clock, three thirty Eastern Standard Time uh, when I got a, a message uh, from a, a really good uh, friend and source. Uh, about Chase Young signing with the New Orleans Saints. Um, I mean, it basically came out of nowhere. Uh, I didn't. I, I was. I was almost under the impression like he was telling me like the Saints were vis like Chase Young was visiting the Saints. Uh, but when I you know texted him, he confirmed it, and he pretty much told me that Chase Young was gonna sign with the Saints. And I said this, and I'm gonna say it again. This was the same person when Sean Payton was gonna step down. He had that information right off the bat so i trust this source i trust it 100 percent. and what i'm about to tell you i trust 100 percent. so i'm probably about to make some people mad i'm probably about to upset some folk by what i'm about to say but i'm very very comfortable with this information and what this person told me so check it out um chase young uh signed with the new orleans saints for a one-year $13 million contract. But as we all know on Friday, Chase Young was supposed to visit the New Orleans Saints. And we know that he rescheduled. And the question, you know, on everybody's mind was, why did he reschedule? Like, oh, man, look at the Saints once again. You know, get our hopes up. Let us down. Well, turns out that Chase Young was trying to weigh out his options. There was the Carolina Panthers. Um, they were trying to sign Chase Young. And the reason for them, like, backing out of, uh, you know, this opportunity to sign Chase Young uh, is because Chase Young has a neck injury, a, a neck issue. He has a neck issue, and they didn't even give him a physical, which is the reason why, if you hear some reports now, they're going after Jadavion Clowney. So people are probably wondering to themselves, why are they trying to go after Jadavion Clowney? Well, that's the reason. It's because Chase Young has a neck issue that has to require surgery. Um, the Saints ended up signing him, which is the reason why they signed him to a one-year $13 million deal. Number one is to protect himself, and number two, uh, you know, it's a prove it deal. So the Saints are really pretty much gambling on Chase Young, hoping that he, you know, can be able to get through this particular situation. So when you're dealing with a neck injury, when you're dealing with neck issues, um, it's very, very serious, especially for a defender. And, uh, you know, you can't protect that. So that's where we are, who that nation. Um, uh, the Carolina Panthers uh, were very high on his radar. Uh, they didn't want to give him a physical. So, you know, he... The Saints were really pretty much talking, you know, his language. They spent the weekend uh, trying to go over the contract situations. Basically, you know, they were talking on the phone. Of course, like he flew in today because they were kind of wrapping it up. So they they pretty much uh, had a deal in place over the weekend. He flew in uh, today to pretty much make it official. But don't be surprised if you hear in a couple weeks that uh, Chase Young is going to have to get neck surgery. So that that's where we are, who that nation. That's what was told to me. 
I trust this source 100 percent He was the same person that told me that the Saints were gonna sign Chase Young. He was the same person that told me that Sean Payton was gonna step down and go to TV. And he's telling me this right now. So, you know, here we are. But now you gotta ask the question: why in the world would the Saints sign him to a one-year $13 million contract when they knew more than likely because of this situation? They they basically could have gave them anything they wanted. Like they honestly they could have, especially like since what they know, what they know now. So the Saints really were showing some love to Chase Young based on the situation, giving him a $13 million guaranteed contract. But uh I don't know the severity of this this uh neck issue. I don't know how long it's gonna cause him to be out. Maybe if he go ahead and get it now, uh, you know, he'll be ready for the season, but uh, don't be surprised when you hear that story come out uh, pretty soon, um, unless, you know, he, he ties to, you know, you know, I guess, you know, try to, you know, hold off the surgery, which I highly doubt that's going to happen. So be on the lookout for that. Be on the lookout for that, folks. That was, that's what was told to me. And once again, I trust this individual wholeheartedly. So I'm just going to go out here and just say it. Everything he has told, told me has been factual. It has been factual. So. That, that's what I'm saying. Carolina really wanted him. Uh, Carolina was really interested in him. Backed out. That's the reason why you're hearing Jadavion Clowney reports coming out right now. But let me go ahead and I'm going to read some of your comments and then we'll uh, go from there. And I'm also going to open up the phone lines, uh, see what some of you have to say uh, about this. Because I know a lot of people, you know, they want to comment on this. And honestly, man, I went about an hour and some change uh, last episode. So I'm not going to really be talking that much i want to open up the floor see what you all think about this signing uh let's see not 6.5 million guaranteed 13 million uh salary well this is probably the best case scenario you know because if it doesn't work out which you hope that it does um you know he's not on the books you know three four five years down the line like some of these other guys all this dead cap money that they got so go ahead and put this uh go ahead and put the link inside the chat uh i'm just asking everybody to hit that like button look i, I don't ask for much i'm just asking everybody to hit that like button but you know uh, i'm just excited about you know this this uh this signing for the new orleans saints because you know despite you know the, the situation that he has to endure um if he can get right you know this is gonna this can be huge for the new orleans saints this this can be huge for the new orleans saints but you know, when you're dealing with a neck injury and you're dealing with, uh, you know, having to get neck surgery, that that's serious. That's serious right there. You know, so you got to you got to believe that this is something that, um, you know, this is something that the New Orleans Saints going to have to, you know, if, if it don't work out like they, they're going to have they're going to experience like some backlash. Because of this. All right. Well, we're going to go, go to Josh. Josh, how you doing, man? Hey, what's up, TJ? How's it going? All right, how you doing? I'm hearing a bunch of static from somebody. Uh, let me let me go ahead. I'm gonna mute uh chosen mic real quick. Uh, okay. Uh, chosen, mute your mic real quick, man, because uh, we can hear you in the background. All right, let me try to see. I'm trying to see if I can mute chosen here. Um, not giving me the option to do so. Um, uh, but go ahead, man. I think I think we good now. Hey, you still so hear static? Uh, I don't anymore. Do you? Okay. No, I don't hear it. Go ahead. Okay. So, hey, TJ, before I get into this, um, I want to take a, a moment to thank an ESPN analyst. Can I, can I take that moment? Uh, um, yeah, go ahead, man. Go ahead. Okay. So, you know, I was looking to do, get an interview because for one of my classes, I had to interview a sports professional. All right. Um, um, former ESPN football analyst, Dave Palais, um, agreed to an interview with me and he gave me a fantastic interview. I know I'm going to get a great grade on that and all that stuff. And, um, but the interview is up on my channel, this ask a mom channel. If anybody wants to see it, we actually went like an hour. He told me so many interesting things about his life, about how he, how he became friends with Shaq and Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant and all this sort of stuff. Um, and, um, it was just a great interview and he really helped me out with this class and everything. So I want, I want to publicly thank Dave Pelé, uh, for giving me this interview and helping me with this class and just doing the interview itself because it was freaking awesome. 
So I, I'm hoping you you didn't mind me doing that, but I just I told them I was going to publicly thank him, and here it is. All right. Well, and pre, now, de definitely, uh, you know, huge news, man, and um, and that's that's great, man. And make sure I want everybody to make sure that they check that out. You know, check it out on your channel. You know how hard your work, man, and everything that you had going on in school, but you know, and, I, and we appreciate that, man. But uh, no, I definitely want to get your take on this uh this whole uh, Chase Young situation. What are your thoughts on that? Okay, so mostly good, right? Because the, the mm -hmm. kid has a lot of talent. Right. And like you said, he's only 23 or 24. Mm -hmm. um, I don't buy into this injury-prone stuff because I'm just not cool with labeling somebody injury-prone that's that young, right? I, I feel like you have to have been in the league for a while to get that label, right? Right. So um, I, I don't think that's fair to him. The, the, the one problem I do have with him is that Dennis Allen is going to have to stay on him because Chase is the type of dude that if he doesn't feel like if he's not feeling that day, he'll give you a half ass effort, mm. you know, and um, that's, you know, and we've already got Chris Olave giving half ass efforts when he feels like it. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, we, we don't need, um, although Chris Olave did improve at the end of the season, but there was a while there where he wasn't trying. Right. Mm. Um, but that, that's a big deal because if he quits on you, I mean, he, he he's good, but he's not Randy Moss, right? He, we can't let him get away with that stuff. Right. So, I mean, that's a big issue. Um, I, and I do see that happening given that people do sense sort of a weakness in the Saints coaching staff. So he might, he, Chase Young might be able to think that he can get away with some stuff like that. So that's something to watch for. But if he does give it his best effort in every game, um, we got ourselves a dog here, man. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, look, my my biggest issue is this, this neck surgery, you know, and if if this guy has to get neck surgery, that's serious. And it also, I, I hate to be like this, but it also speaks to the 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 desperation of the Saints trying to make sure that they get a pass rush, and they're taking advantage of this opportunity. You know, like I don't feel like you get this opportunity if Chase Young didn't have like some of the the injury history. And honestly, you got to think that this is this is pretty accurate. The fact that he is 24 years old, he has all that type of talent, and there wasn't a large free agent pool for him like that. So a lot of teams, I, I feel like when they probably heard about the issues, and, you know, they probably act away from Well, you know. Are really taking a gamble with this if, if, if this is – you know, something that, that, that could possibly be lingering. Because we already I seen Lathan Vander Esch, uh, the linebacker for the Cowboys, he just had to call it a career because of a neck injury. So Yeah. Well, I think, um, well, you know, when you're as young as he is, I don't think injury history is a deal killer with teams. So I'm thinking of the teams that were that passed on him were looking at a combination of maybe injury history and what I just said, that, that where he likes to go, you know, half-assed at times. Right. Um. And they might not want that could cause other players to get mad at him and can cause some toxicity in the in their locker rooms. And maybe they're thinking about that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but I like Chase, man. I want to give him a chance. He seems like a good dude, but it's just that uh, you know, like I said, he he likes to shut if he feels like shutting down, he'll halfway shut down. And that's that 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 can be a problem. So right. um, but as far as his neck injury, I believe he's a hardworking kid. I believe he'll do everything he can to get himself um ready for the season. Mm. Um, whatever he's got to do with his neck, if he's got to call Aaron Rodgers and talk to Aaron Rodgers, his natural help gurus that he uses, that's what he'll do. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, you know, I, 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 I don't question like his willingness to get ready for the season at all. I, I feel like he will overcome whatever this neck injury is. Mm. Um, so I'm confident in that. I'm not even worried about that. All I'm worried about is if he's pissed off one day, is he going to give us a half, half ass effort and maybe blow a game because of it? That's the, that's what I'm thinking about. Yeah, well, look, I think that having a, a leader like Cam Jordan, like constantly pushing him, Cam Jordan understanding like where he is in his career, that can probably, you know, be helpful. Um, what you were dealing with when it came to like the 49ers and and also uh, the commanders, like you had Nick Bosa, but Nick Bosa was his teammate. And you know what I'm saying? I don't feel like, you know, it. you're not really going to be looking at him you know, like, oh, man, I got to listen to you or something like that. But somebody like Cam Jordan with a 117 and a half sacks, multi-time Pro Bowl, all pro, 
uh, you know, basically is an Iron Man. Um, I think that you know, you, you'll be hard pressed not to want to listen to somebody with that type of cachet uh, that comes to work every single day with a lunch pail mentality and gives it it all. So I think that that's something that the Saints have going for them. And you also have uh, Tyron Matthew in there and Demario Davis. So I don't feel like his lack of effort is going to be an issue because he'll have guys that are, aren't afraid to call him out on it. And you have no choice but to listen to him because, I mean, these guys have done it all. And, it, and they played at the highest level and they never phoned it in. And when you have that type of reputation going for you, it's hard for somebody that may have that reputation to try to kick against it. So you got anything else, man? Yeah, I got a couple of more things, actually, but I'll make them very quick. Um, the, the last time we talked, we talked about the running game, and I talk, talked to – you know how I was all mad that we didn't go for Derrick Henry or A.J. Mm -hmm. Dillon and Aaron Jones and all that? Right. And you had told me that um, the running game was – long story short, you had told me that basically Pete Carmichael was the cause of the bad running game, and that's absolutely true. Mm. So I ended up agreeing with you and, and disagreeing with myself, but now I'm back – to kind of disagreeing with you. And I just want to tell you why real quick. Mm -hmm. um, the fact that we didn't pick up a big 240 pound plus back means that 80 or 90% of the workload is going to be on Alvin Kamara again. And we've seen what happens when Alvin Kamara takes on that much of the workload. He, he has a few good games and he starts slowing down from all the hits. Alvin Kamara needs to be the number two guy or needs to split the workload with someone else. Um, or, but as it stands right now, it's going to be pretty much all on Alvin Kamara uh, with, you know, an occasional helping of Jamal. And I forget the other guy's name right now. I'm sorry. Um, Andre Miller. Andre Miller, right. I yeah. wanted to say Sanders, but I knew that wasn't right. Yeah. Um, so I, um, it's going to be all on Alvin Kamara again. And um, I, 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 I'm not sure that's going to, that's never worked out for us. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. Well, so, what what like what makes you think that they need a big uh, a big back and and what makes you feel like Alvin Kamara is going to have the majority of the workload? Well, because that's what the way it's been for however long now. However long for who? For the Saints. But this is a whole different coaching staff we're talking about here. So you you expect for the coaching staff that they brought in to basically run the same offense the Saints have been running for the last fifteen years? Good point. Yeah, I mean, so I mean, it's the forty. The, is they are trying to run a little bit of what the Forty ers do, and we know that the Forty ers they use multiple, they use multiple running backs. I mean, we've seen them do it with Tevin Coleman, Raheem Mostert. Uh, you know, they they did it with um, you know, they 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 kind of you know don't have to do it with Christian McCaffrey because Christian McCaffrey can do so many different things. But they've always had like a whole stable of running backs. And honestly, they, they do use multiple running backs when you think about it because they have uh, Mitchell out there. Um, they got um, they got Debo Samuel that almost serves as a running back as well. So I wouldn't say that it's all going to be solely on Alvin Kamara. They have a reputation for that. And I would think, Josh, that, you know, over the last couple of years, man, you've been lobbying for the Saints to have a three running back set here. And it just seems like to me, like you should be elated at the fact that they actually got an offense that's kind of going to give you what you've been asking for for the last two seasons. So I don't expect for him to have the entire workload. I expect for it to be uh, a little bit of, you know, mostly Alvin, because, I mean, he is the feature back. But you're also yeah. going to have a supporting cast of Kendra Miller and Jamal Williams, too. And also, you got to look at Jamal, man. Jamal is what you're asking for. I mean, he's the larger back. He's like 225, 230. So you still have a larger back. Uh, in a form of uh, of Jamal Williams. But, you know, the biggest issue, if you're going to try to do this the way that you want, you got to address the offensive line. So adding Chase Young to your team, I think we can honestly say that the Saints more than likely are going to be looking at left tackle, offensive line in, in, in the first round. So you're about to um, get what you want, man. Um, So I, I'll let you get to the next call, but my last thing for you is actually a question for you because I want to hear your opinion on this. Do mm -hmm. so you think the uh, just um, – the addition of Chase Young is going to change up our scheme at the line at all? Nope. No, I don't. I, I don't think that it's going to change it at all. I think they're going to run the same type of scheme. I mean, the Saints, th that's not a, like a particular scheme that the Saints run, to be honest with you. They play a little bit of 3-4-4-3. Three, four, four, three. I mean, you see a little bit of nickel or dime. You know, like they, they do it based on the situation 
like if they're limited at a certain position, you'll probably see more three safeties or something like that. But they change it up from time to time. So but as far as with the rush, they don't really they don't really like do too much blitzing. So it's probably going to be like a lot of man on man. Let the best man win type stuff. Occasional blitzing. Uh, if a guy just dominates, he probably demands a double team. So they'll open up opportunities for other individuals. But, uh, yeah. Josh, I got to go ahead and let you go, man. I got a few more calls to get to. But hey, I appreciate I you, say, man, for chiming I, in. I want to say congratulations, man, on a million views. I saw that. That's amazing. You have freaking earned every bit of that. So, dude, God bless, it, brother. All right, man. Thank you, man. And good luck yeah. to you, man. And I'm glad everything worked out. Y'all make sure y'all check out his channel, man. Uh, sit down interview. Uh, give, give that in the, give the guy a name from ESPN again so everybody can um, know when to check it out. Dave Palet, that's P-A-L-E-T. Okay. All right, man. Y'all yeah. make sure y'all check it out on his channel, man. Josh, thank you so much. All right, thank you. All right. Thanks. Yeah. All right. Shouts out to Josh, man. Y'all make sure y'all check it out. Um, man, I, I just I know from personal experience how hard it is to actually uh, you know, get individuals you know, to chime in and, you know, be on, like, podcast. So, I mean, he really did the work. So, y'all make sure that y'all support and check that out. Uh, uh, Tragic, can you mute your, uh, your mic, man, because I can hear you in the background. Can you mute your mic for me? I appreciate it, man. Uh, We're going to go to Jerry. Uh, Jerry, how you doing, man? Jerry, are you there? All right. We're going to give Jerry a few minutes. We're going to go to you, Tragic. Tragic, how you doing, man? Hello? I can hear you, man. All right, we got Tragic on the line. Just want to make, make trying to get his, uh, trying to get his mic straight. Yeah. Uh, you kind of, you kind of low there, Tragic. Kind of low. Okay, I hear you now. Okay, now I'm getting, now I can hear my back. Now I'm getting feedback. <laughs> All right. All right, I'm gonna let you. Hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna kick. I'm gonna let you kick you out, and I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna let you come back in. I'm. Yeah, man, you got a little, a lot of little. Ooh, man, who, who, who am I picking up? Is that Jamie G? G, T, me, mute your mic, man. <laughs> Okay, I I hear, man, I I hear, I hear way too many people right now. Okay, but all right, let me let me go. I gotta go ahead and kick my Fred Brett out, man. I mean, I'm hearing everything. <laughs> I'm, going, <laughs> I'm like, man, I'm hearing everybody. I'm hearing background <laughs> feedback. All right, I'm, I just want to let everybody know. Look, when you when if you're li if you're uh chiming in, don't put me on speaker. Okay, if you put me on speaker. Mm -hmm. Or you don't have AirPods, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna hear feedback. All right, so I a lot of feedback. <laughs> right, uh, but, but Jerry, man, how you doing, man? I'm good, TJ. What's going on with you, bro? Yeah, man. How, how you doing, man? What, what you got for us? G call back, man. man. G call back. <laughs> <laughs> nah, <laughs> tragic. Look, too, man. I had to, I had to, look. Like, get some order up in here, man. Yeah, order in the courtroom. <laughs> right. yeah, I'm like, man, what the... yeah, but what, what you got for us, man? What you think about Chase Young? Man, I love it, bro. Cause I, I love the Chase Young uh, signing, uh, TJ. Mm -hmm. I, I, I had a, I had a feeling it was coming, and as you were saying, uh, you know, he he was scheduled his uh, visit what Friday or Saturday, mm -hmm. and he came in Monday. I mean, what a good way to start the new week off. Because yep. he was nearly getting ready to go to Tennessee. Right. But he said, hold up. <laughs> I'm gonna stay right here. I'm good right here. Right. And look what we and look what we got now. Because mm -hmm. and that's gonna and that's gonna bring big help for that defensive line. Right. Big time. Because you know, you know, I, I, I don't know how I, I don't know how much how much I'm I don't know how much Cam Jordan got left in the tank but see signing Chase Young. And he and he what he and he say he's twenty five or twenty four somewhere in that neighborhood. Yeah, he's twenty four. He'll be twenty five on the fourteenth of April. So you, yeah, bro, you need you need that young. You need somebody young, especially in that front line with you know with Cam, with uh, Saunders, with uh, Granderson. I, I, 
TJ, I love it. Right. I love I love it because I had a feeling that this signing was going to happen. Hmm. And you said it in your last show. It was bound to happen. We didn't know it was going to come until like hours later like when you say he was visiting uh, New Orleans earlier and that, you know, they talked about it and here we are right now. We right. got him. Yeah. Look, I, man, first off, I, I just want to say this. You know, when I was talking this morning, I made a I made a, a tweet about um you know could it be a possibility that some of the frustrations from uh former Saints and you know just you know like Michael Thomas and Marshawn Lattimore could it play like a huge role in him not showing up? And right. you know some people are like man that was a horrible take that's a horrible take. Yeah. The reason the reason why I'm not saying it's a horrible take is it, simple. Is is because it's, 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 it's pretty it's pretty understand it's pretty understandable if a guy is uh struggling so you know what i'm saying like if a guy is like frustrated with a team he has a rapport with a certain player uh tragic mute mute your mic man tragic mute bro <laughs> i think you get I, <laughs> don't don't worry about it don't worry about it i got it i got it don't oh, don't nobody okay. gotta worry about them nobody gotta worry about their mics no more nobody gotta worry <laughs> about you know nope. i think if you, if you call I think in, everybody, you gotta worry about the mic i i, I just i just i just found the shut off i think here. everybody is, I, I think everybody is super stoked after the sign they just want to go ahead and be loud and just go ahead and <laughs> i can't even get my thought right okay so I made a tweet. <laughs> all right, so hey, I made a tweet. It's all for one, y'all. <laughs> you good, Chad. You good. I can't hear you no more. Um, yeah, I but I, I made a tweet. That there, there, there should be a listen off stage feed uh button over there uh for you, uh, Jerry. But anyway, um Chase Young, you know, I was there thinking like maybe the reason why he didn't, you know want to sign or you reschedule is because maybe something that he heard from his former you know fellow Buckeyes may have convinced mm -hmm. him not to show up so right. I, I posted that and people like oh man that's a terrible take that's a terrible take like first off I just want people to understand <laughs> I don't do these things to get clout I don't care like if I'm wrong and I'm proven wrong I'm gonna say it mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. people people like to attach everything that you say and they like well if you get it wrong it's a shot to your credibility like i don't look at it that way i created like really good dialogue people were going back and forth people were really wondering and when i was proven wrong i deleted it i don't feel bad mm -hmm. about doing that i was proven wrong so what's the point of me holding like holding a tweet up when it was proven that it wasn't right but when I got the information about Chase Young signing with the New Orleans Saints, I don't think one has anything to do with the other. Because if you follow the state of the Saints podcast, right. you already know how I roll. So yes, that's, that's just the way that I feel about it. My biggest concern is the information that I got in regards to him having to get neck surgery. That's my biggest issue. If he mm -hmm. has to get neck surgery, how serious is it? How long will it, it cause him to be out? Will it affect him actually – you know, playing in a regular season if he was to get it in the next couple of weeks. That's that's my big question. But all in right, all, he right. had, he checks all the boxes. So I think that we, as as the members of the Who That Nation, we ought to be excited about him showing up. That That's my big thing. Uh, Jerry, go ahead, man. Uh, uh, I, I hear exactly what you're saying, TJ. And once again, I love the signing. And, and before I get out of here, <laughs> mm -hmm. I got I, I got to address this, TJ. Every, shouts out to everybody in the chat, but can y'all do me a favor? If please don't put the name Nate Peterman in the chat, please don't do it because <laughs> that's old news. That's old news. Nobody care about that. Okay, we got Chase freaking Young. Okay, yeah. forget about Nate Peterman because he he. Because I, I, I'm gonna tell you right now, he is not gonna make this team. I can see it right now, right down the road, DJ. Mm -mm. So please I, do me a favor. Stop talking about Nate Peterman. We talking about Chase freaking Young right now. Yeah, I that's all people, I got. That's all I got, TJ. Hey, hey, Jerry. <laughs> I think people just upset about you know. I mean, that that ain't moving a needle. 
Chase, Chase, <laughs> Chase Young, Nate Peterman. You know, I, I ain't got no problem with it, man. Look, he ain't the best quarterback in the world, but the man taking care of his family. Mm, and the way that he I rolls got, and yeah. operates, he must be a likable guy. Because if you playing as slow as he has, and you still getting opportunity after opportunity, like you must be a really nice guy. And he probably like one of them really good, you know, borderline future coaches type guys out there. Who knows, man? Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. look, I, if Nate Peterman hits the field. <laughs> oh, Lord Jesus. My my goodness, man. Your you, you season pretty much over. Like you, 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 <laughs> you are doomed. Like seriously, you, you're doomed. There, there's nothing there, like at all. Like no, I, 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 I'm trying to think. When was the last time I, I ever seen, like in a modern era, a guy throw five interceptions in one football game. Like, I'm that's, trying to think. I remember man. Joe Burrow a couple years ago man. through four. But I'm talking about, like, with Joe Burrow, it was a couple of tip passes or something. Like, you can kind of understand where he was going with the football. Right. But I'm talking about Nate Peterman was throwing them picks like the mob met him before the game and was like, okay, man, <laughs> you know, you got a beautiful wife. <laughs> I'm sorry if, uh, you know, Jesus something Christ. bad was to happen <laughs> You that's the type of thing. You, you hearing that, huh, Tragic? <laughs> this, this, man, this man was like, hey, you know, it's a it's a beautiful family you got here. Uh, you know, be, I gotta say it, be tragic if something happened to him. You know? <laughs> like this man was throwing picks like, like the quarterback was the receiver. I'm like, I don't know. like even the commentators was like. You really got to ask about the future of Nate Peterman. Like, that's how bad he played in that game. But if he ain't your game, <laughs> man, my goodness. I'm going to have flashback from Wade Wilson, Danny Wilson, <laughs> every last quarterback that you can remember playing for the Saints. I'm going to have them flashbacks. But I yeah, hope you're right. Bro. I hope you're right, Jerry. I, I hope that he he's rather – they don't pick him up or he's so deep on the bench you can't find him. Right? I, that, that's when I <laughs> – you need, yeah, a, you need a flashlight yeah, to find him. You need a map. <laughs> need GPS yeah. to find him on that bench. Like, need okay. everything, TJ. Yeah, exactly. Well, you got anything else, Jerry? If I, if I move on to tragedy. No, no, man, I'm good. I, I'm, I'm good with everything that has to be said, TJ. I'm just like I said. I'm happy about the signing, and uh, let's go. Yeah, Gabe, man. I see you, bro. What's up, man? Yeah, man. Shouts out to Gabe. I see him in, in, in the. Uh, in the green room right now. Hey, man, appreciate you, yeah. man. We'll get to him really soon. But, uh, Jerry, thank All you right, so TJ. much, man. It's always a pleasure. Uh, appreciate you stopping always. by, man, giving your, your opinion on Nate Peterman. <laughs> yes, indeed. And, uh, yep. <laughs> <laughs> man, <laughs> hey, man, this is supposed to be a serious podcast. We're going to be serious. Man, people going to be like, man, what the hell we rolled up <laughs> Fun over here, y'all. Y'all, y'all, y'all already know how this going. We on the stay in the same podcast, bro. exactly, man. <laughs> y'all be blessed, man. I'm gonna get out of there. I'm cold, y'all. All right, Jeff, man. Tell you this, <laughs> man. We serious over here, man. We we keep it real. We keep it serious. <laughs> man, we about to move. we about to move on to tragic, man. Tragic. How you doing, man? All right, you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, man. What, what, All right. What you got for us, man? Man, you know, you know those Falcons fans going to be catching the end of that Nate Peterman uh, conversation. They're going to be thinking we hype on Nate, Nate Peterman. Yeah. <laughs> hey, ain't nobody hyping about nothing. <laughs> not, not when it comes to Nate Peterman. Like, mm, that ain't it. That ain't it, bro. I, I don't know. Like, if you want, if you want Derek Carter to believe that you believe in him, this is the move to make, man. This is the move to make. But what you got for the trash? Yeah, I'm excited about the uh, about the, uh, the the young signing. You know, mm-hmm. I feel I'm getting tired of the seven second coverage sack that we that we that we have to wait for every year. <laughs> you know, <laughs> right. It, it, it's been a while. It's think, been a while since we had some consistency at the pass rush, man. Hopefully, he can provide that. You know, he's probably not as. Uh, I, I I think his motor to me is he, to me he has a high motor. I, I, he's just not as strong on the run as as our other uh, defensive ends. Right. But I think he has the high motor for for pass rushing, which right. is mainly what we need it for. I don't care if it's, if you just use him strictly for the pass rush. If you just bought him on third down. 
I need him to affect the quarterback on third down. That's all we need him for. Man, that's a lot of money for a third down uh, defensive end. Man. 13 million guaranteed. Bro, you got to be able to stop the run, too. So, I, I, don't, I don't know. Like, look, if he can get with Cam Jordan, because here's the thing. When Cam first got into the league, he was known as just being a, like a run stopper. He wasn't known as That's being true. a pass rusher. So he built in, order for him to fix some, in order for him to fix some of these situations, it's probably best that he, he actually roll with Cam Jordan. Cam Jordan kind of teach him a thing or two. But, man, wanting to stop the run, it, it's a it's a matter of wanting to stop it. Matter, You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it's about effort. And a lot of these guys, they, you know, it's like what somebody said to me on the last episode. There was like, I think it was King Arthur. He was talking about rushes and hurries and, and why that stuff, that stat isn't that important. And guys don't really value those type of things. They don't value like tackles for loss like they do sacks. So they don't really put the effort into stopping a run more so than actually getting pressure on a quarterback. So hopefully he can actually – provide that that pass rush but also be able to uh, help and run support by you know working alongside cam jordan yeah and sometimes stopping the run is also has to do with with with, with the defense discipline itself sometimes you might be uh you know getting out your gaps trying to trying to get that pass rush or whatever you, and now you're out of place with your gap position to stop the run so some of that is like you know it factors into like the, how the defense set as a whole and you maintaining your gap Got responsibilities. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, like, hopefully he'll he'll get it done, and hopefully some of these younger guys like Foskey and Brzee can step up and, and and be able to provide a little bit of a spark, man. Because I, I don't want to just look at Chase Young. I mean, you got to look at Carl Granderson, Brzee, and, and Foskey, man. These guys got to get it done, and uh, hopefully you know Chase Young can be able to add to that, give you those double digit sacks. Uh, and, and give you that spark that you need. Yeah, if he gave us eight, I'm happy with that. If he gave us, if he gave us eight, I'm, I'm good. If he, if, he, if he, you don't necessarily need the sacks. If he can just get that pressure, I just need that pressure to be there more on that edge. I just need the quarterback getting that ball out a half second earlier than what he wants to. Mm hmm. I agree. I agree. If you can do that, then I mean, you can definitely make some noise. But they got it. They got to find. To get consistent uh, on quarterback as well, uh, to be able to chase down some of these these athletic quarterbacks that's coming into the league because it ain't stopping, man. It, it ain't stopping. Yeah. Like if you notice, like the reason why we look at it like it's a changing of the guards when Drew Brees, Tom Brady, Philip Rivers, the Mannings when they retire because the the, the statue quarterback is starting to fade out, man. And you're going to see more and more athletic guys who. Probably a pocket passes, but have that ability to run, and you gotta, you gotta take that into account. So, you, you need that's to what gave for with the times. Yeah, that's yeah. what one of the, the reasons they bought Gay for. He's a spy that's able to kind of spy and catch those athletic quarterbacks that that can, right. that can escape the pocket. <laughs> yep. Yeah, and I, that's something that they need. They they definitely needed uh, Willie Gay because he's more of a spy. He can catch those quarterbacks. But you also need that, you know, these these defensive ends to be able to chase down the these quarterbacks, man. I mean, it, it, it's it's imperative that that, that they do this. It, it, they have to, because you're you're not going to win a lot of football games in the modern day NFL if your your defense doesn't have that ability. It's good to be fundamentally sound and be where you need to be, but you also have to have that level of athleticism uh, that that's going to be able to neutralize some of these athlete, athlete quarterbacks. Uh, you got anything else, uh, tragic? Yeah, but it's more a concern in the offense. Like, what, I'm I'm excited mm -hmm. about our offensive coordinator and the system that they're bringing. I feel like right. this is a more up to up to date style of offense that that the Saints right. been needing. Just like right. in the '80s, the West Coast was the uh, was the thing to be, and the main thing in the West Coast was that running back was like an extension of the uh, of, of the, uh, the pe catch out the backfield was an extension of the running game. Where I feel right. with this new offense that that they're bringing in. You got the wide receivers that you need the type of wide receiver that is that is an extension of the uh, of the run game. Like his 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 passing skills, his I'm say his running skills is an extension of the passing game. So now it's like vice versa. You need these these wide receivers that have running back skills versus yep, just able to run block. Yep. Not just run block, but actually be able to run. 
You know, you need like that Jamar Chase, the uh, Debo Samuels, guys that can catch the ball short, break tackles, you know, physical at the point of attack and, and make things happen underneath. Yeah, I mean, but you also, you also, it is big um, in, in the 49ers offense is all of their wide receivers can block. You know what I'm saying? They got a team full of Traquan Smiths when it comes to the run block. You know, like, they, they have guys that can do that. And if, if the Saints going to be successful, a lot of these guys don't have like them. Because uh, Kyle Shanahan, he got a – and he said, like, you got to be able to block in order for you to be able to get the football. So Oh, yeah, yeah, I you got to earn the rock. Kubi has to be able to bring that too. Yeah. So I, I expect for him to, uh, you know, bring that type of culture – uh, to the Saints. Uh, you got anything else? That's about it. But like I said, I'm, I'm expecting a bigger season out of Shahid. I'm, I, I think you're going to really see some Shahid bud in this system. Yeah, I, I agree yeah. with that, man. It, it's a long time coming, Tragic. I think that that guy is talented. I think that the Saints kind of wasted the two years that they had for him. And I think everybody's getting excited about A.T. Perry. I'm excited about Rasheed Shahid. I, I think that Rasheed Shahid going to have a breakout year. And, and how everybody's excited about AT. I, I think that everybody's excitement is going to, like the way they feel about AT is how they're going to feel about Rasheed Shaheed, man. But uh, Tragic, thank you so much, man. Appreciate all right. it all, man. Be safe on Future that. Get your Hall of Fame man. and AP to me. <laughs> <laughs> Defensive player of the year. <laughs> all right, man. Tragic, take it easy, man. <laughs> Shouts out to Tragic, man. Defense. Shouts out to the defensive player of the year, Nathan Peterman, man. Shouts out to him, man. Look, I know a lot of defenses are excited about every time he hit the field. Uh, but, look, all jokes aside, um, I'm pretty sure he's a student of the game, but I don't think anybody wants to see this guy out there playing. I, I don't think nobody wants to see him out there playing. I think that would be a huge mistake. Let me read some of these comments, and then we'll get to Gabe. Uh, just give me a few uh, minutes, Gabe, and we'll get to you, man. Hear what you got to say. I agree. Uh, most uh, Saints fans ignore stats. Um, yeah, especially like certain stats because they, you know, I mean, but it's not their fault. It is not Saints fans' fault that they ignore certain stats because we become programmed to pay attention to the eye-popping stats, right? Um, how many catches do you have 20 yards down the field? Um uh, how many sacks do you have? Uh, how many, you know, tack and like break, you know, broken tackles you have? How many long? long you have? You don't really pay attention to like the small stuff, like well, I won't call it the small stuff, but the stuff that really means something in the grand scheme of things, like pancakes. Uh, you know, not giving up sacks because we only pay attention to offensive linemen mostly is when they, you know, giving up sacks. Uh, the hurries, the pressures. Because sometimes, like, you hurry in a quarterback, he might shift to the other side, which caused the other guy to get the sack. Or it might cause him to get the ball out of his hand quicker, and if he probably had a little bit more of time, he probably would have delivered that pass and it would have been a good game, a big game. So those stats matter. Rather we want to agree with them or not. They're not the sexiest stats in the world. They're not going to move the needle in some people's eyes. But guess what? Without them, you know, you, you have a bad football team. So – we only pay attention to like the, the eye popping things when you have pro football focus and you got a uh, uh, next gen stats and all these different things. They basically program us to care about the big, huge plays, the one hand snags, the, you know, the level of difficulty back to live as it was a 23% probability, 10% probability, you know, like we, we become programmed to do that. So I, I, I'm not surprised that anybody, you know, people think the way that they do. Uh, I heard uh, Saints fans, uh, I, I give, give you the time of day on that one. Let's go to Gabe. Gabe, how you doing, man? Gabe, are you there? Uh, look like the screen is pretty much loading up. We'll get back to you, Gabe. Uh, just let just let me know when you when you're there. Uh, let's see. Uh, you can see the difference in Carr when the pocket wasn't collapsing around him. Yeah, I mean, he gets happy feet when, you know, you feel pressure. And, I mean, that, that's pretty normal with a with a quarterback. It speeds up the, the clock in his head. If I know I got to get this ball out of my hand by three Mississippi or I'm going to get tattooed, 
regardless if I make the adjustments at halftime, you know, like I, it's still in my head. I feel like these guys are around me. So it speeds up that clock. And sometimes like it calls you to make, uh, you know, bad decisions. So if the Saints can fix their offensive line, I think they can help Derek Carr, you know, a little bit more. He want to be around winners. Uh, uh, wrong team, Phil. <laughs> hey, I, I will say this. Uh, you know, a lot of people feel like, Regardless of what the Saints bring in, they, they feel that the Saints won't reach their full potential until Dennis Allen is gone. So some people feel like you do, man. Uh, looks like Jameis moved on to a better offense. I mean, well, Kevin Stefanski is a really good offensive mind. Uh, you know, he, he does a really good job, man. I mean, they've had quarterback difficulties. Rather, it was uh, Thompson Robinson playing. Uh, rather, it was Joe Flacco playing. Deshaun Watson, before he actually got hurt, was playing pretty, was playing pretty good. So Jameis Winston has a, a really, he has a really strong chance of playing. And um, is it, it'll be interesting to see, like, you know, what Jameis would do, you know, if he if he gets that opportunity uh to be able to play. Uh let's see. Uh in, about time, no more kickoffs or punt returns. Yeah, I think the Saints need to go ahead and um move Shahid from that responsibility. Ability. You know, if we talk about Rashid Shahid here, I think they need to move on from to me, like I'll be honest with you. Um Deontay Hardy, if I'm if I'm not mistaken, is still out there. I wouldn't mind bringing him back and have him responsible for kick and punt returns. Uh but we're gonna go ahead and uh go to uh Gabe. Gabe, how you doing, man? I'm doing all right. You can see me. Yeah, I can see you, man. I can see you, I can hear you, man. How you doing? I'm doing good, man. I'm doing good. Um First off, I want to ask you how you and your family are doing, your wife and Paxton and stuff. Everybody doing oh, okay? Man. Yeah, man. They awesome, man. Uh, Paxton uh, just started soccer, which he excited about. Uh, and my wife, uh, she's doing fine, man. Thanks for asking, Gabe. I appreciate that. That's, that's good. That's good. How you been feeling? Man, I've been great, man. I ain't got no complaints. Uh, just excited about talking about the Saints and uh, talking to good people like yourself, man. I, I ain't got no complaint, man. I'm blessed over here. How about yourself? All right, good. I'm blessed. I'm blessed and Hall of Fame. All right, good. I hear you, man. All right. Um, I don't know too much about Chase Young. This is what I do know. Like I um I heard a couple of people you spoke with already. And um I heard mm -hmm. I, I and I looked at film on him. Um right. I know he a big name and stuff. I was really excited about the name, but then I started hearing that he give up on plays and stuff. Mm -hmm. And he doing this and that. And um like Jay, um, like somebody said, the age, um, he he pretty young, so I think he might be okay in that. Um, and I think we got some – I think we got good veteran leadership. So if anybody can make him play at his highest potential, I think it's the Saints locker room. Feel what I'm saying? Mm. Yeah. So, um, I mean, yeah, that's I think, a good point, Gabe. Yeah, if anybody could do it, the Saints could do it. But Cam, John, Demario Davis, Tyron Matthew, those three, they should have them fired up and ready. You yeah. know, um, Lattimore don't do too much talking. But yeah. – um, I, I, I think I think with this game, I, I think it, it's about the people that you're around, man. It, it's okay. So we all know that okay. There, there's this uh, there's this whole um, theory that's called like social reduction theory, right? I, I learned this when I was in, in college, right? Yes. Sir. And it's a theory about you becoming like a part of your environment, like because your environment like clings to like violent activities, or you know what I'm saying, like you know, certain cultures, like it might cause you to be that way or make questionable decisions. Being around positive environments more times than not are going to cause you to probably make more positive decisions. I feel what you're saying when it comes to certain leadership, when it comes to, uh, you know, Demario Davis, Cam, uh, Cam Jordan, Tyron Matthews. Not only are these guys winners, these guys, like you got Tyron Matthews has won a Super Bowl, Multi-time All-Pro, you got All-Pro and Demario Davis, multi-time All-Pro and Cam Jordan playing your same position. When you see those type of guys around here, and you see the environment that they 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 are they they created because of their leadership, it's going to make you fall in line. It's going to make you want to be a part of that. I feel like going into the Commanders, you were the second overall pick, so they looked at you as the savior of the franchise. And more than likely, if you're the second overall pick. There aren't too many guys around you that that you're not better than, right? I mean, as soon as he got drafted, he had a C on his chest. 
which in my opinion, I feel like if you're a rookie, why do you have a C on your chest? I feel like you still got to earn it. Like, I don't care where you were placed. I still feel that they need some time in order for people to see your leadership quality. But they were quick to ignore him as leader of that team. So you got veterans looking at you to be that force. So I just think that maybe because of this situation that he's in, it will probably help him to be a little bit better and maybe that, that motor to run a little bit more hotter. Man, I, 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 I got, agree. Man? Yeah, yeah I'm, I was happy to hear all that. That's why I was smiling because, man, I'll tell you one thing, man. Man, I, I show I, we need all the help we can get, and I'm it, this it, it's tough. It's getting tough, man. With these, yeah. you know, what was missing out on the playoff. You know, I ain't yeah. been on here in a while, but you remember me. I mean, yeah, but um, yeah, yeah man, of course I do, man. I, I remember you, and you know, right, I, right, I know you. And and another thing, this is what we got to do. Even if Chase, even if Chase Young pan out to be the player we know he could be, that's fine. Mm -hmm. I hope we. I pray to God. I hope he could do that because God knows we need help getting to the quarterback and stuff. You know that we right. ain't generate no sex for real. I think, yeah, like you said, Carl Granderson had eight and a half sex. He was our sack leader, right? Right. And um, yeah, man. I mean, we, it, it was it, a drop off. Yeah, it was. It was. It was. We we got to get to the quarterback better and um. The, the play calling, that stuff i seen, I just got to mention it. This ain't about Chase Young, but the play calling i seen with um, Derek Carr dropping back, especially the um, Jacksonville game, i seen the receivers, like, jumping up and down like they finna lose their mind. We we, we, we got to find these receivers, man. Like, I can't take like I can't take that no more. Like, we, we got to <laughs> we, we gotta find these well, receivers, and um, we got to have better play calling. So I expect for the new coach, um, Clint Kubiak, I, I I hope these him and these five six coaches he brought in, I hope we can fix this play column because Chase Young and nobody can't save us if we come in with the same play column. It's all about deception, man. If we come in right on the traditional um run the ball, run the ball, pass the ball, like you say, we 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 gonna come up short every time. I can't take that though. Yep. Yeah. You know, we, I, I, I don't think you're the only person, Gabe. I think yeah. there's a lot of people that, that feel the same way that you do. But um, I don't expect for the Saints offense to look the same way it did last season. Um, I think that it, the, the offense, I don't want to say it was, yeah, I say it. It was a little bit outdated. I, I think that the Saints, they got to get away from things that, that they seen work five, six years ago, and we're going to keep on doing it because it works like you're not that team anymore right no. so you got to be able to adapt you got to be able to bring different nuances uh to to the game every single year don't be afraid to test things that you have seen work if, if it works go with it why not i mean what's the worst that can happen you're already about as terrible as you can possibly be offensively yeah. so Clint Kubiak coming in, Gabe, I think that is it, it'll be a breath of fresh air. I just want to see some of these young, talented receivers and offensive players be able to live up and be able to show everybody their true potential. Because I do not like the stigma that is being placed on these guys because of the ineptitude of the offensive coordinator and the offensive staff last season. I, I don't feel like that's fair. If anybody is questioning these guys as far as their talent, or their skill set, or feel like they passed their prime. How can you say that knowing that this issue that we all had was with P. Carmichael and what you just alluded to, what the offense was looking like? So I, I'm just wondering, man. Man, I needed to hear that, man. I saw me. So you really, so you really think this offense going? I just want to know because I know you know what you're talking about. I know you know. So the offense is going to change, right? I just, you think yeah. it's going to change? I, yeah, I, I, look, it, it's still it's still a West Coast offense, but it, it's an offense that has been proven to work and it has been successful. Like, it has a really high uh, success rate, which is the reason why the New Orleans Saints decided to adopt it. Uh, you know, so I, I expect for this offense to look different. Um, I do feel like some of the things that make this offense, like, fully effective um, the Saints still need. I still feel like they need a little bit more athleticism, especially on the left side. Uh, definitely need to get yourself offensive lineman, left tackle, hopefully, um, with the top, you know, with your top pick. Oh, hold on, hold and on. What you, what what'd you say we need to get? What you offensive lineman? Offensive lineman. 
Okay. Offensive yeah, line. Offensive man. line in, in, the, in the first round. I, I feel like they need to go that route because um, it, it's time to it, it's time to get some stability at that position. You know, James Hurst, like he did his best. Andrews Pete did much better than he probably did in years at on the offensive line being a left tackle. But it's time to find that person that can be your left tackle, maybe even get a fifth year option out of the guy. Because it is about that time, man. The Saints have been struggling to try to find stability at the left tackle. And I just think that if you're going to get where you need to be, if you're going to have Derek Carr upright and going to have him playing consistently, which you need based on this quarterback room, no disrespect to him, unproven and, and unworthy in my opinion, but you got to be able to keep this guy upright. You put all your eggs in one basket. You made him comfortable by bringing in Nate Peterman and having Jake Hayner as as you know as a in a in a quarterback room, so neither one of those guys are threatening his his throne, so to speak. So you you, you he's your guy. So you got to make sure you do everything you can to make sure that he's as effective as a quarterback position as possible. So you ain't got a choice. Uh, but, but uh, Gabe, man, thank you, thank you, man. I really do appreciate your time and uh, make man make sure you call back anytime. Man. I know you be in the chat sometimes, and I, I see some of your comments at times. So, don't be a stranger, man. Uh, oh, man, pull up every now and then. <laughs> oh, I definitely won't. I definitely won't. I just got one more question. I'm finna get off. Yeah, go ahead, man. What, what you saying around the league? I just want I want this coming from you. Mm-hmm. With all the teams that's getting stacked up all around, what you saying? If we if we manage to stay healthy and we looking strong like it may see, what 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 you get? What's our chances of make? What, do you think we are gonna make the playoffs this year? I mean, just I know we don't know, but I just want I want to hear from you. I want to TJ opinion. I'm going to say, I'm going to say they're going to make the playoffs. I'm going to say they're going to make the playoffs. Now, they might not win a division. Might not win a division, but I don't feel like they're as terrible as people think they are. It just feels this way because the energy is different. Like, it when you spend like 15 years building up energy, right, a culture, like cr- recreating a culture, And you get it to where it needs to be. And then all of a sudden, like, little pieces of the culture just starts to fall. Like, that is what people are feeling right now. So when you don't feel like there's hope, you you tend to just feel like all hope is lost. But I I do feel like they got enough talent to make the postseason. And if they don't, then you pretty much already know what you have with Dennis Allen. It's over. Like, there's nothing that you can tell a fan there is nothing that you can come out here and say that can justify you bringing him back yet again when he's under when he's underachieved. So I'm gonna say that they're gonna make the playoffs. You 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 basically flipped around your defense last year. You flipped around your offense coaches this year. You gotta make the playoffs, man. So I expect for them to make the playoffs. I expect the defense to to be formidable because Dennis Allen is a really good defensive mind. And I think that Clint Kubiak will be able to bring some things to the table. But look for the defense to carry the offense for a couple weeks until, like, they figure it out. And I think that's when you're going to hit the ground running. All good. God bless, brother. God bless you. All right, man. God bless you too, man. Thank you, Gabe, man. Call back anytime. All right. Thank you. All right. Yeah. Man, shouts out to Gabe. But, yeah, man, look, I I, I feel like they will make the playoffs. I, I do. I feel like they have enough. Uh, on the team to make the playoffs. Uh, don't if you ask me, are they gonna win a division? Probably not. But the best thing you got going for for yourself is, is I don't see seven teams that I feel like they like that postseason last year. You can kind of like plug and play. Like Philadelphia, you know, you could have placed them with you know with the Saints. Uh, you know, Tampa, you could have replaced them with the Saints. They had the same identical record. So there you go. So I, I think they'll make the, the playoffs. I know some people don't want to hear that because they want DA out of town by any means necessary. I am not advocating for that. Like, it's a new season. So if, if it's in, the, you know, if the Saints were down bad and they were just looking terrible, maybe we can have this conversation because you're like, man, we, we just need this thing to, to end. But it's a new season, so I don't feel like, you know, anybody should be like, man, I want the Saints to be, you know, I don't know, two, like, win two games or be uh, three and 14. Like, nah, why would you want that for your team, man? 
you you shouldn't want that. It's a new season. So may not like Dennis Allen, may not be a fan of him, may not feel like he's the right coach, but always be a Saints fan first, in my opinion. Uh, but don't be a delusional Saints fan like some of these other folks who willing to, to risk it all, even though the Saints telling you that they got issues and problems, right? I mean, some of us, we, we got Saints Stockholm syndrome, and it's real with some of us. Uh, let's see. If we don't make the playoffs, uh, I'll be at the end of the bar with the <laughs> rest of the Saints fans. Well, look, if they don't make the playoffs, then they just don't make the playoffs. And I think you'll probably get the, the moment that we all want, uh, well, most of us want, which is Dennis Allen being fired. TJ, uh, I was uh, waiting in the back the whole time. Oh, I didn't, I didn't even know, Chosen. I'll go ahead and let you in, man. Chosen, uh, how you doing, man? Oh, snap. You got me, bro? Yeah, I got you, man. How you doing? What's up, man? I've been in there since the beginning. I don't know what happened. Like, through the whole, when you first started with Josh, I have been in. I don't know what happened, but uh, that's crazy. What's yeah, going on, I, though, man? Man, everything oh. good. I don't know, man. Like, I was, man, first off, I could just hear, like, everybody in the background. I, I forgot to shut off the listen uh, off stage feed. So, people that's probably listening, they can't hear you. But I can hear, like, people in the background. So, I had it on. So right. every little conversation, every little thing in the back, like some of y'all got some really good high quality headphones and mics. I'm like, my goodness, man. I'm about like, Yeah, hey, because everybody kept yeah. doing I was like, dang, TJ just skipping over me. I'm like, all right, all right, all right, we good, we good, we good. No, I didn't really skip over anybody. I just like I was just like wondering what's going on. And then I had to I had to like I had to like, you know, shut it off a little bit because I'm like, I, I couldn't really focus on like what I was saying or what the other person was saying. But I, I got right. it under control now, man. I appreciate you being here. Uh, so what oh, you got for us, man? All right, first of all, how y'all doing, chat? Your favorite moderator. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but nah, man, what's going on? Yeah, that's right, Jerry. Kick rocks. Not just playing. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, man, glad we got Chase Young, man. That's, that's a good thing because this free agency was looking pretty – you know how it is year after year. And it's crazy, bro, because I think that was uh, Mario. Shout out to Mario. Mm -hmm. Mario hit me up last night on Xbox. He was like, Chosen, man, you think we're going to sign Chase? Chase Young? And I was like, honestly, bro, if we don't, I wouldn't be surprised. Because, you know, we have a history of not signing big-name guys, bro. We always let them walk out the door. We never get a chance to, you know what I'm saying, show what we can offer. And rightfully so. I mean, we I, I understand we're not the most appealing organization if we really want to be realistic with ourselves. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? We really right. not the most appealing. You gotta really want to play for us, or it's gonna be by default for us to land somebody like that. And then it goes to show you with Chase Young the information that you provided. Um, you know, hopefully that that turns around and and, and you know the 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 football guys be with him with the neck injury. But mm -hmm. still, in all, it's still a good weapon to have. I'd rather have him than not have him. Um, anything can happen. Um, and it goes to show you, bro. Like I was telling Mario, man, I was I was telling them last night, bro. Well, we at right now, imagine this little feeling we get with Chase Young. Every free agency should be like that. But we kept trying to keep this quote-unquote Super Bowl window open that we never made it to. You know what I'm saying? Right. And and all we kept doing was prolonging the inevitable. Like, we just kept – we we tried to avoid the very thing we ran into. We kept running from it and running from it, and we still ended up being mediocre. We still ended up missing the playoffs, all behind trying to – salvage little, little bit of Sean Payton philosophy that we had left instead of going through the growing yep. pains. We could have we could have let these contracts expire. We would have had money. We would have had draft picks. You know what I'm saying? We we should have just basically rebuilt, man. We should have just basically just – but we were instead of holding on and holding on and see now our back against the wall, now you got to rebuild. And and mm -hmm. little things like this is just going to show you we happy over a Chase Young signing. Just imagine if we could attract free agents every year like that, man. Like, we could have been straight. We could have had money. We could have had picks. You know what I'm saying? We could have been looking toward a better future, building a new culture. But that goes to show you what happens when you when you try to hold on and you're scared to move on. You talked about change for years, man, on the podcast. We talked about change and embracing the post Sean Payton, Drew Brees era. And we kept holding on to it. And you see what happened when you hold on, man. You see what happens. So, I'm yep. glad that we I'm, I'm glad that we're finally moving forward to a better, well, I can't say a better to a new culture. And even if it don't work, TJ, hell, I'm glad that we're trying it. You know, yep. you don't know if you don't try. You yep. know, yeah, you don't know. <clears throat> I, I mean, we all wanted these guys to like do something different 
unconventional, and they have. And I will say this. You can say whatever you want about Dennis Allen. Like, you, he has a lot of shortcomings as a head coach. But one thing you got to give him credit for, he can recruit the hell out of some players. Oh, yeah. I, look, I give him that. Jarvis Landry, Tyron Matthew, Derek Carr, for better or for worse, whatever you feel about him. Yeah. And now you got Chase Young. Like, the, 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 the highly touted guys that we all talked about, like, the, despite how you feel about him right now, like, right now you, you feel a certain way about Derek Carr because you've seen it. But before, like, he took a snap with the Saints, you thought it probably was a really good idea. Like, well, okay, we're going to do something. So I give him credit in that regard, man. And I don't know what it's going to end up being. Like, it, this might be a disaster. But at least you're trying. <laughs> right. At least, at least you're trying. trying. Like, all right, bro. Like, if I said we're going to go down, man, at least go down swinging. Just don't lay down, though. Right. You know, just just don't just don't lay down. Like, I feel like yeah. if we going if we going to go down, take take it from us, bro. Don't don't just don't just hand it to him. You got to take right. it, bro. You know what I'm right. saying? So, and yeah. another thing, man, um like Gabe was saying about the offense, man, I, I had questions too because I feel like the offense is gonna be pretty good. But I feel like I feel like we're gonna be much better because Lord knows it can't be much worse. <laughs> yeah, it can't, it can't get no worse. Like so, I feel like with Clint, Clint Kubiak and you know what I'm saying, all these things we got. The way I'm, I'm excited about him using Shahid, um, Keandre Miller. I'm ready to see Keandre Miller, man. I, I can just see him now in that Christian McCaffrey type uh, packages, bro. Just some jet sweeps and we might see some end rounds. You know what I'm right. saying? We just, yeah. you know what I'm saying? It's just exciting. It's refreshing, bro. Like I say, even if it don't work, it's just going to be glad to see that they try. I can respect the Saints for trying, even if it don't work. Right. Or at least we know y'all gave it y'all all. And, uh, yeah. you know, and then we got, then we got Nathan Peterson. So, <laughs> hey, hey, Nathan Peter, hey, Peterman, I, man, I, look, they, like even even Twitter didn't know what that boy was. Like when I put T nine in, it kept on making me say Letterman, like Nathan Letterman. They ain't even want, like even even Twitter was like, man, look, this dude don't exist. Like <laughs> they ain't even want to let me put his name in. Like like even even Twitter was like, man, this dude irrelevant. But, I'm uh, letting y'all know right now, Nathan Peterman jersey loading soon. We got a song coming from TJ. Peterman gonna be hot this year. <laughs> <laughs> man, hey man, I, I don't even know if I want to put pen or pad on this one, man. I'll be honest. Oh with you. man, hey, got, that's man. They, they got they already got a, a lot of spools uh, on them already, man. You know, I, look, like they had like NFL top 100. It had like uh, what they had like him as the number one player. I'm just like you can check it out on YouTube. Just just type in Nathan Peterman NFL top one hundred. Oh, somebody somebody created like you know guys doing sound bites like you talking about somebody that's major. You can you can clearly you know, there's probably like Aaron Donald, or Tom Brady or something. You know they they but it's just funny man. So everybody check it out man on YouTube. But oh I, TJ before I go, yeah. this the Gumbo Pop podcast running too right? Yeah it is. I I, I got a Gumbo Pop question. Oh uh, uh -huh. you got to go into detail, but Aaron Donald. A shocker. I didn't you I mean you heard you mentioned it. I I don't know if you did a show about that or if you're gonna speak on that, but I just want to make a quick comment. And Donald, I appreciate what that man brought to the game because mm -hmm. uh 10 years, it's like he came in and out. TJ, it's like he came and left. Yep. Like he clocked in, did what he had to do. All right, y'all. <laughs> like, right. like that's it. Like and yeah. Donald will be missed to the game of football. I don't know if he planned on retiring, but uh he definitely represented the the NFL in a in a very good way. He brought the defense back. He brought that excitement back, and uh, he he definitely opened the lane for those short defensive tackles. Because I remember there was some concern about his height, and when he first come right. out, you know he he was short, and you know it's, it's he he definitely made the way for the defensive players we want now. You know what right. I'm saying? So so shout out to Aaron Donald, man. I, I appreciate what he brought to the game. But that's all I got, TJ, man. Looking forward to a new season. Um, looking forward to draft night. All the drafts be hits. I'm looking forward right. to draft night. <laughs> I have to check out the draft night. I have, I encourage y'all, please check out that Caesar Ruiz reaction. <laughs> Man, that, that, that's a classic right there. That, that's always going to be, like, my favorite, like, uh, probably draft reaction ever. Uh, it could be hard. Because, I, I mean, it was so genuine. And I feel like any time, like, I, you know, was to do something like that, it pro I don't want it to be, like, you know, you know, dishonest or whatever. But, yeah, I wasn't very happy about that. But I don't think I'm going to have that. I don't think I'm going to feel that way, Chosen, because they got mm -hmm. so many different needs, man. So it's like you it's can't get mad. Yeah. Like, yeah, you can't get mad. 
They, now you that Chris Olave, that Chris Olave draft gave gave the Caesar Ruiz one a run for his money. Oh yeah, think yeah, about yeah. It. We yeah, was lit. That- <laughs> yeah, yeah, we were lit because they finally did what we wanted them to do. We were so excited, man! Like, man, they finally did what we wanted them to do. Man, that, <laughs> that, that was crazy. Yeah, you ran, you ran that thing back. But uh, wrapping it up though, bro. Yeah, Chase Young. Like you said, like another caller said, man, the veteran players, they're going to have him ready. He's going to be motivated. He really mm-hmm. going to show. Then he on the prove it deal. He on the prove it deal. So even if he don't yeah. stay with us, he want to show, man, look, I'm worth more than this third, just one of your 13 million. So he, right. he got he to got, he prove it for himself, his family. You know, that man still got to grind. He still got to put bread on the table. So right. it, it's a win win for everybody. And if it don't, it only costs you 13 million, no dead space. You move on. No harm, no foul. Yep. So, yep. You know. I mean, everybody wins at the end of the day. And, but Everybody like I said, I'm, I'm more concerned about this this neck issue, how, how serious it is. Right. Um, I don't think it's something that can be, you know, avoided. So I expect for that story to come out pretty soon, uh, probably like within the next couple of weeks. I told y'all, but, my uh, boy, TJ, incredible, huh? man. Yeah, I'm telling you, I need to hit you up for them lottery <laughs> tickets, for the parlays. Man, <laughs> hey, bro, like, I ain't never seen nothing like this before in my life, man, like, Man, I ain't, like I'm serious, man. Like, I only thing I was just doing was just reporting it. I just feel like sometimes people just like, who the hell is he? You know what I'm saying to be in this position? Like, I but to be quite honest with you, I don't supposed to be in this position. I don't. I wasn't supposed to be at the Senior Bowl. I wasn't supposed to be at the Combine. But guess what? Right. I'm in that mug. You know. Right <laughs> so there it is, right there. Yeah, there, there it is. is, right there. Yeah, he got uh, some haters hopes. out here, man. And and I found and I found like a, a couple cats, man. I ain't gonna call them out by name, but I see a lot of people, man. They they be wishing you well, like man, and the TJ McDuck. But like when that that situation came out, man, it, they they was kind of suspect. But I see. I just want to let you know. I see, and it's all good. Mm-hmm. But guess what? We mm-hmm. the same podcast. We in this thing, straight up. We ain't going nowhere, baby. We ain't, we ain't going, going nowhere. nowhere. Get used <laughs> to this black face, cause we 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 here. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I know some of y'all probably got an issue with that. I'm from Louisiana. I already know the deal. So y'all already know. But hey, we here. Chosen, thank you so much, man. Appreciate it, man. Appreciate Call back two times. Yes, right. sir. Who that? All right. Who that? Yeah, man. Look, I like Deion Sanders say, man, people don't like to see your brother out here talking that talk. But guess what? I'm here. So ain't nothing y'all can do about it. It is what it is. You know, I ain't never stepped foot in nobody newsroom. I know I ain't never like really had to do no intern, nothing like that. But guess what? Got hard work, dedication, and we here. So I appreciate everybody that been rocking with me from the beginning. Rocking with me now. I really do appreciate it. And haters, hey, y'all can continue to watch. Uh, let's see. Uh, I told people in another Saints group uh, what you had said about uh, Chase Young and people was denying it and hating. Uh, I was defending you to the end. Well, look, I don't care. Like, here's the thing. When people see me, like, on social media, like, they think that I ain't got no business being here. Like, you know, when they see me, like, who is he? Who is he? You know, like, but at the end of the day, I don't care. Like, I don't have to look the part. I don't have to play the part. It, like, that's why I'm so appreciative of people that, that support this podcast. Because, you know, people just think, you know, if you just follow me on social media, they just like, oh, man, he just be talking. He just be talking. But I think that, you know... I, you know, I think I'm one of the best content creators out there. Like, I take a lot of pride in what I do. And I think a lot of people, they don't they don't understand it. They, they don't get it. I, like I said, I'm not really, I'm not around the football team like that. Um, but I still get, you know, very credible guests here on the show. I still get, you know, like, you know, a lot of people, you know, chiming in. And I appreciate that. And people have a problem with it. Because some of these people, you know, they, they've been doing it for a while, for a minute, but they can't do it. And then you have people out here, yeah, I'm going to say it, they be biting. But guess what? You can't do it like me. You can't. You know what I'm saying? I bust my ass. Some people just want to do it. Some people try to do it that way, and they they not getting the results they want. And then on top of that, like I said, I'm from Louisiana, so I already know the deal. A lot of people out there, you know, have a problem with your boy, your boy. And you know what I'm saying? I'm doing, and I'm doing my thing. I'm like I said, I'm from the boot. I'm from Louisiana. I know there's not a lot of representation when it comes to the New Orleans Saints that look like me. You got a few people, but for the most part, you know, they don't look like me. And I'm good with that. And I don't care if you got a problem with it. You know, it, it, just, it is what it is. That's reality. Most people that I see, you know, are individuals that, you know, y- y- y'all know what I'm talking about. 
Y'all, y'all, y'all ain't just fall off the turn of truck. And if you from Louisiana, you already know what I'm talking about. How many, like, think about this. Like, how many people, like, covering the New Orleans Saints, you know, people of color that, you know what I'm saying, that people give them levels of credibility? I can count, like, probably, you know, maybe on one hand. But guess what? Like I said, the State of the Saints podcast ain't going nowhere. The haters can go sit down somewhere. I don't care what y'all think. I'm still going to continue to do the things that I want to do. I'm still going to be aggressive, and I'm still going to be in the places where your favorite reporter be at. So, because, you know, I got... I got drive, you know, and grind. And not to mention, I'm pretty damn creative as well. But let's go ahead and read some more of your comments. TJ, you know uh, your work. Uh, don't let them fools get to you. Nah, they, they, ain't, they ain't get to me. I just find it, you know, I just find it funny. You know, I just find it funny that most people feel the way that they do. I ain't never did anything to anybody. Like, I I don't, I don't take shots at people. I've had people take shots at me. Because like I said, it's just people don't understand it. Like, they don't understand it. They just think, you know, oh, man, who is he? He trying to look the part. I never try to look the part of anything. I, I'm just a person up here. I do episodes giving my opinion about certain situations. And like I said, I'm blessed from time to time. Someone will be willing to give me some information, which like it was today. I'm not saying that's going to be a continuous thing because it's not. But if if it's something that I feel like, you know, my my, you know, listeners and viewers need to hear, I'm going to say it. Like, don't get mad at me. You know, don't get mad at me because, you know, I got drive and determination. And, you know, people, you know, they respect what I do. And I respect them. That goes a long way. Uh, That's another reason uh, I can't rock with the Saints. They wouldn't give TJ Press uh, credentials and he's a top five uh, Saints content creator. Yeah, that I ain't going to lie. That, that does bother me from time to time. I, I don't think anything that I'm just saying – yeah, you know what I'm saying? I make little spoofs and stuff like that about the Saints, but that's more like just to make people laugh, have a good time. Like, I, I think I'm pretty even killed. There, there's not a person that I ever interviewed, I honestly feel, wouldn't want to come back on the show. Like, I don't think I ever did anything to anybody or tried to blindside anybody or anything like that. Like, my work speaks for itself. And just because I don't wave the pom-poms and say certain things where, you know, that needs to be said, you know, or – like, I'm, I'm good on that. Like, I feel like God going to take care of me regardless. You know, I, I didn't I didn't make all these episodes, you know, just with the intentions on trying to be like everybody else or doing what everybody else is doing. And if that works out for them, fine. But I, I'm, I don't, you know, I don't lose any sleep about that. TJ, uh, would you like Bowers with the 14 pick? I wouldn't mind Brock Bowers. I think Brock Bowers is extremely talented. Now, you you would have to uh, look at the team and, and and think about like you know you got bigger fish to fry. Uh, now the Saints uh, they did f- sign an offensive lineman today, the offensive lineman from the um, Minnesota Vikings. You know he, he served as offensive lineman and le- and uh, left tackle. So that that's the veteran I was talking about that you can bring in and uh, still draft yourself a, a young uh, left tackle. So. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, you know what the Saints are, are going, what they're going to do in this situation. Uh, they hate so much, but they still watch. That's crazy. Yeah, it's because we. That's because we have fun over here. Like we entertain it. We entertain it. We have a good time. We talk about the team. We give a real perspective. And I feel like you know everybody' opinion is valued. That's how I feel. Uh, I feel like everybody's opinion uh, is indeed valued. My my son and broke that pitch. <laughs> I just looked up and like, what a minute. <laughs> pitch up. <laughs> yeah, pitch up there looked like the, the frame crack. I gotta fix that, man. Uh the picture right there with <laughs> with me and Josh Norman up there. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Oh man. I was like, man, what in the world? But anyway, um, yeah, man, we have fun over here. And we don't take ourselves, I said, we don't take ourselves so serious. And I get it, you know. I get it, but hey. Uh, you don't pacify them, and uh, they do uh, good. Uh, you say it. Uh, if they suck, you say it. Yeah, I mean, that's just how I roll, man. I, my Look, my obligation is not to the New Orleans Saints. It's not. I love this team. The reason why I do this show is because of the love that I have for this franchise. Like, since I was four years old, as long as I can remember, I've been a fan of the New Orleans Saints. But I feel like I'll be doing a disservice to the people that watch this channel 
if I didn't give my real perspective about what this team is and some of the decisions that be that are made. Like you can't sit up here and be underachieving and have people, you know, getting mad that people like holding you accountable for that. Like you can't do damage control, like and get mad. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I, to me, I feel like that's the type of people you want around. You know, like people that's gonna keep you, uh, you know, keep you, you know, upright. You know what I'm saying? Like let you know the pulse of the people. But some people don't want that. You know, they they want to be lied to. Which I, I see a lot of these same fans, you know, they like to be lied to. Because when I, like, put different perspectives out there, man, nah, bro, you don't know what you're talking about. Okay. It's because people don't want to hear the truth. People don't people don't want to think. Like, people want individuals to think for them from time to time. But I, I'm not going to do that. Like, I'm going to put my perspective out there. Sometimes it's going to be right. Sometimes it's going to be wrong. You know, and, you know, if you call me out on it and I'm wrong, I don't care. People don't know how to, people don't know how to, under, you know, people don't know how to approach that. Like my, my words and what my questions or my viewpoints are not like, you know, set in stone. It's not like I look at them like gospel, like some people do. Like some people like ready to like go to war. Like I, I give you my opinions on it, uh, but some people are just ready to go to war for it. And I'm not. Uh, TJ, would you rank the NFC South? Uh, let's see, starting quarterbacks. How would I rank them? Uh, number one, Kirk Cousins. Uh, number two, uh, Derek Carr. Number three, Baker Bayfield, and number four, Bryce Young. Yeah, I mean, I, I still feel I still feel like Derek Carr is better than Baker Mayfield. I still feel that way. But Kirk Cousins to me is is the number one. He's number one in my opinion. Now I know, like I said, Baker Mayfield played pretty well, really well. Um, but we gonna see. It, did did it have everything to do with Baker? Or did it have everything to do with Daniel Canales? And Daniel Canales is not what the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, but I'm going to be honest with you. I've been having some, some takes about the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Oh, they ain't going to be the same team. Oh, they ain't going to make the postseason. Yada, yada, yada. And I've been wrong. So I don't know. This could be one of those situations where Baker looks the part and looks the same way he did last season and probably take a step forward. But, and I and look, I, I'm not afraid to admit that. Uh, but, you know, I, I do think that Daniel Canales uh, not being there could play a huge role. Uh, he was very instrumental in the resurgence of Baker Mayfield. Got him paid. Uh, we'll see. We'll see what this new coordinator has in store. TJ, I've been hanging uh, with you uh, since day one. Much respect and much love. I hate haters. And this is where I'm growing uh, at and learning. Uh, Cannon, well, look. I would be lying to you if I say that certain things don't really get to me, especially like when you work hard and you dedicate yourself to something. And when you have people up here that don't understand you, don't really get to know you, basically judge you. Rather, it's the fact that maybe, you know what I'm saying, like I ain't got hundreds of thousands of followers. Uh, maybe it's the fact that, you know what I'm saying, like, I, you know, I got like maybe 4,700 Twitter followers. Like, you know, it's not nothing like crazy. Right, but I give my opinion, and for the most part, you know, people like they they, uh, you know, tweet and you know and give a little dialogue, you know, and I'm appreciative of that. And some people don't like it, you know. Some people just don't feel like I belong in that particular space, but I don't care. I've been a same fan once again, my, most of my life. I'm 37 years old. I love this team. It's not much that you can't tell me about the team. It's not much you can't tell me about the city of New Orleans. I'm from there, like. I mean, to me, like, I mean, I, I I am New Orleans. You know what I'm saying? Like, just like some of the people that may not be, you know, not live there anymore, but you still, you know what I'm saying, like, from the city, like, you are New Orleans. So it's kind of hard to, like, kick against somebody that's actually from the city, that understands the culture, that understands the frustration. Like, that's me. So, and a lot of people may feel the same way that I do because, you know, that's the reason, honestly, I feel like we all – just kind of get together, congregate. And you ain't even got to be from, from, you know, New Orleans. Like you can be from, you know, the, you know, just the Gulf Coast area in general. Like, you know how much this team means to the city. You know how much it's to, it means to the state, the Gulf Coast in general. So, you know, it's hard to like kick against something like that. You know, like it, it, I'm passionate about what I do, but you're always going to have haters. Cause once again, like some people just don't like, you know, the positions that you're in. They don't like, you know, people respecting and valuing your opinions and, and the things that you're doing. And I, I can understand, I understand it. I understand it comes with the territory. 
And hell, you got people out here that, you know, don't want to give me any type of attention, probably for the simple fact of the way I look. You know, like, I'm not, like I said, I'm not naive, but I ain't going nowhere. Because <laughs> I, like, like Deion Sanders say, I'm comfortable, you know, I didn't, I didn't got comfortable. I'm good. TJ, uh, please uh, tell me how is Mickey Loomis still employed? Uh, because, I mean, it's hard to fire a guy who's third in command of the entire uh, Saints franchise. Uh, when Tom Benson passed away, he put in his will, uh, he gave Mickey Loomis a uh, third in command of the team. Uh, something was just, just so happened to happen to Dennis Lauscher, the team president, and Gail Benson, the team owner. Then he becomes the owner of the team. He decides what's going to happen with the team. That's power. So, I mean, him being GM, <laughs> you know, that that's kind of like on a, I mean, that that's very small in compared to the type of power that he has. So if anybody thinking like Mickey Loomis can, you know, going to get fired or anything like that, like to me, this is one of those situations where he can be general manager until he doesn't want it anymore. Like we just gonna have to deal with it. It's kind of like Cowboys with the Cowboys with Jerry Jones. That that's that's where we're at. <laughs> so strap in who that nation. Just gotta hope that Ebenezer Scrooge have a change of heart. Not saying that Mickey Loomis is a mean man. I'm just using that for example. Right, y'all remember a Christmas Carol, right? You know, uh, you know, uh, Ebenezer Scrooge got visited by three ghosts, and then all of a sudden, like he changed his life. So hopefully, you know, uh, you know, he can see some of the things that are going on with this team. And change the way that he actually runs it. You know, maybe he has an Ebenezer Scrooge moment. Cause Lord knows he need one. Uh, everything, rem uh, everything remains to be seen until you put pads on and get on the field. No one really knows. Yeah, I mean, nobody really like. I don't know exactly what, we, what we're talking about. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's, there's more into that Rose City, but um, yeah, man, we don't know what these guys are really going through. We don't know. Uh, let's see. I refuse to get excited about any signing or this team. Uh, they have to prove it to me uh, this year. Show me, show me, show me. I agree. And uh, that's not a that's not an unreasonable ask. I, I think that they need to show you. I think that you need to show you um, what they're capable of. Uh, give people something to be excited about. This is a start. This is a start by signing Chase Young, uh, a guy that you probably didn't think that was in your wheelhouse, uh, you know, maybe an individual that you didn't think you were going to be able to attain, but you got him. And, um, but this is a start. Like, you you got to win some football games. You got to win some football games. Like, the last couple of years, they, they've been trying to build this team on excitement. Dennis Allen first year, Jarvis Landry, Tyron Matthew, former LSU Tigers that we all loved and admired. Came to the team. That was excitement, right? Oh, you had Mike T. You had this, that, and the third. Jameis Winston, yada, yada, yada. Didn't work out. Then the next year, you know, you go out here, you get, uh, you know, Brian Brzee. You know, he was, you know, did a really good job. Uh, you bring in Derek Carr. Oh, man, we finally got a little stability at the quarterback position. You know, maybe the Raiders didn't treat him right. It's amazing how we just fall for this whole Raider narrative. It's not the Saints. It's the Raiders. It's the Raiders. The Raiders are the reason why these guys aren't successful. The Raiders are the reason why these guys aren't living up to their potential. But it just seems like, you know, if you bombed at the Apollo, you're going to bomb at the House of Blues. And it just seems like they bombing everywhere that they go. Don't matter. Sometimes if it walks like a duck, flies like a duck, sounds like a duck, it ain't a Kodiak bear. It's a duck. You know, so that's where we at. So you got to give people something to be excited about. If you don't, then you're going to find yourself in the same position you've been in. A bunch of uninterested fans and a lame duck coach, which should, who, who should be a lame duck, I should say. Your show is the best. Uh, what you think of having Cam uh, on the inside and Chase Young and Carl Granderson as the two outside guys? You know, that would be a good idea, you know, to try, but I don't think at this stage of Cam Jordan's career, he's trying to get tossed into the inside i think that cam jordan uh likes being on the outside i think he's going to remain there i think that a lot of what cam jordan was dealing with injury wise is the reason why uh it, you probably seen a little bit of a drop i don't think he fell off the face of the earth now i don't feel that cam jordan is the same cam jordan he was 
like four or five years ago, but I don't think that, you know, he he just basically deserves to get take a trip to the landfill here. I still feel like there's some meat on the bone there. Now you're probably looking at maybe four and a half, five and a half sacks, but once again, this goes back to my last episode that I did earlier. I'm not looking at Cam Jordan the way I did five years ago. I'm looking at some of these other guys, and you shouldn't look at Cam Jordan that way. Cam Jordan at this stage should be a, a part of the supporting cast. It's like Ray Lewis, like Ray Lewis' final season. It's like I'm not looking at, at Ray Lewis. Like if Ray Lewis make a play, he make a play. But this is Terrell Suggs' team now, right? I mean, this is, you know, this is Jimmy Smith's team right now, you know, the cornerback. This is – Ed Reed, you know what I'm saying? Like, these are the guys that I'm looking at to be able to carry on. Like, this is a victory lap for Ray Lewis. To me, not to say that, you know, a victory lap is like basically like just phoning in and just rest on all your accolades, but I'm looking at Cam Jordan like, man, this is like a victory lap, like the last couple of years. Yeah, be productive, but it's not going to change the way Saints fans feel about him. Like, this guy is on the Mount Rushmore of New Orleans Saints players. Like, I don't care what anybody says. Like, I know we hold Archie Manning in the highest regard, but if I have to move somebody, I'll move Archie Manning for Cam Jordan. Like, to me, I, to me, some of the most important players in the history of this franchise, Ricky Jackson, Willie Rofe, Drew Brees, and Cam Jordan. I mean, I'm pretty sure you could probably slide some other players in there. We all love Deuce McAllister. We all love Reggie Bush. But – when you think about guys, when you look at them, the, the contributions that they made, like you can't write the Saint, you can't write the same story without them. Like they they are that important. Like nobody should wear number 94 anymore. Nobody should wear number nine anymore. Nobody should wear number 57 anymore. And nobody should wear number 77. Like I feel like a consolation prize for Archie Manning, nobody wears number eight. Like I don't think he was that good as a Saints quarterback. I think people give him a pass because the Saints were so terrible and they felt sorry for him. And he was he was good and people look at, well, maybe if he didn't play for the Saints, he probably would have had a better career. So people kind of give him that pass. But to me, I'm bumping him off the Mount Rushmore, Mount Rushmore for Cam Jordan. Like I f- like to me, if we if if we're being honest, and I hate to be like going against Archie Manning like that because I actually met Archie Manning, w- a wonderful person, like a really w- wonderful person. But I mean, I gotta call it for what it is. A lot of you know people holding Archie Manning in high regard and putting him on his Mount Rushmore and having him to a point where he never moved is the same reason why. Derek Carr right now is ninth all time among Saints quarterbacks. Because if you look at the history of the New Orleans Saints, they've been terrible. Like from 2006 on back, you you finally got a bunch of players that honestly deserve to be in the ring of honor. Like think about this. If I'm talking 98 to 2006, let, let's talk about that, right? Let's talk about like eight years. Okay, we can go 96 to 2006 because that was the first year Drew Brees signed as a free agent for with the Saints coming from the Chargers. Who in that 10-year span from 96 to 2006 can you really sit up here and say deserves even a mention on the Mount Rushmore? Like, who, who deserves it? Maybe Deuce, Deuce McAllister? Aaron Brooks doesn't? Joe Horn, yeah, you can put him up there, but that's probably two people. You know, like you can put Joe Johnson, Leroy Glover, Norman Hand, but to me, the Saints kind of dealed them boys out of town before they actually like really established themselves. Sammy Knight is a, is another, but you can easily push those guys off. Like you can easily push them off. Some some people I'm talking I'm talking to right now probably don't even remember these guys. But you gonna always remember Cam Jordan. You always gonna remember Drew Brees. You always gonna remember R- Willie Rofe, Ricky Jackson, Sam Mills. You always gonna remember those guys. You know, like I said, I mean, how many? 
How many in, like emphatically? Like you can emphatically say, and that T.S. man deserves a like a mention on the Mount Rushmore. Not not the not not the fact that you liked him. Oh man, I, I like I'm talking about from the play. Sammy Knight it, it definitely deserves you know a mention. He was a dog. There I was very upset when he went to the Chiefs. You can put Leroy Glove up there, Joe Johnson, but. They only had like a few good years of production as members of the Saints because Tom Benson didn't want to pay him. Johnson, if I'm not mistaken, I think he went to the Packers and Leroy Glover went to the Cowboys. Sammy Knight, he ended up going to the Chiefs and they kept Norman Hayne. So Joe Horn definitely deserves to be, you know, in that conversation. You know, it's, but you, you said Colston deserves it, but I'm talking about from 96 to 2006 like I, I'm, I understand like those guys like came in but I'm talking about like okay so technically I'm talking about from 05 going into the 06 because Colston got drafted in 2006 in the seventh round but I'm saying like who during that time frame can you just sit up here and just say can knock off Drew Brees Cam Jordan Ricky Jackson and Willie Rowe which one of those guys that you can do that not many. So, TJ, you said it would be a short video. You find uh, they they getting you upset. Um, nah, I mean, it was a short, like, I say it was going to be a short episode, but, you know, I always say that. <laughs> I always say it's going to be a short episode and end up being a long episode. Rather, it's the fact that I take phone calls or I just enjoy you guys' company, you know, like answering questions. But, yeah, I mean, I won't say they getting me upset, but Hey, I'm passionate about what I do. You know, there's a lot of passion behind it. So, yeah, in ways I am upset because I don't want anybody to, like to discredit me, but you can't, you know, because, you know, I, I don't take myself, I don't say I don't take myself that serious, but y'all know. But, yeah, I mean, I'm passionate about what I do. Uh, Martin Anderson is the only one. I like Martin Anderson, but are you kicking Drew Brees off the Mount Rushmore? Like, I put it like this. Like, we talking second tier here. If we talk and say, let, let's talk second tier. Let's have some fun because to me, I feel like it's it's kind of hard to kick against first tier. Drew Brees, Cam Jordan, Ricky Jackson, Willie Rowe. Okay. So let's let's talk in second tier. Let's let's say we have a second tier Mount Rushmore. Who are we talking about here? I say we talking Joe Horn. We talking Marcus Colston. We talking Deuce McAllister. And I say we we talking Morton Anderson. I, I see, yep. So Joe Horn, Marcus Colston, Deuce McAllister, Morton Anderson. Who would your second tier be? Like, not mentioning Cam Jordan, Drew Brees, Ricky Jackson, or Willie Rowe. Who, who would be who would be your second tier? Somebody said Pat Willing. Yeah, that, that's a good one. That's a good one right there. Would you move Pat Willing? Like, okay, would you move Martin Anderson? Like, who would you move off the second tier that I just mentioned? Joe Horn. Marcus Colston, um, Martin Anderson, and who else did I say? Dude McAllister. Which one are you moving off that, that second tier? That's a good one, too. Jari Evans. Yeah, that's a good one. I, look, I will move. Okay, so who would I move? Uh, I'm sorry. Man, Martin Anderson played so long with the Saints. So long. And... At times, like he was probably the best weapon the Saints had. Uh, yeah, I would, I would bump, yeah, yeah, I bump, yeah, I bump more than Anderson off. I bump, I bump more than Anderson off for uh, Jari Evans. I would, cause you're not gonna bump off Joe Horn. You're not, you're not gonna bump off Coaston. All right, I don't think anybody gonna bump off Dude McAllister. So yeah, I put Jari so Jari Evans, Deuce McAllister, Joe Horn, and Marcus Colston. That that's my second. That's my second tier right there. That's my second tier. Third tier. Now third tier would be Mark Ingram. It would be AK. It'll be um. Morton Anderson, I got to, I got to, I got to add Morton Anderson. 
And I put Lat I put Lattimore up there. I put Lattimore. I think I think the second wave might consist of like that 2017 draft. I'm not gonna I, I can't put if Mike T would have stayed healthy, probably would have bumped off, probably would have bumped up Joe Horn. Probably would have bumped up Joe Horn, in my opinion, and moved him down to third tier. Okay, I, look, I'm not mad at these third tiers right here. We got Pierre Thomas. Yeah, that's hard. That That's hard right there. That's hard. But, okay, check, check out my third tier again. Mark Ingram, A.K., Mike T and and Morton Anderson. Okay, I, look, I gotta show some respect for Morton Anderson, man. I gotta show, I gotta show some respect for Morton Anderson. So that's that's third tier to me. Who's your third tier? Okay, I see some Will. I see Will Smith up in there. So we really got. We really need to do this. Like we really, like honestly, we really need to do this, folks. I think we need to dedicate a show. I think we need to dedicate a show. Like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give I'm gonna give people some State of the Saints homework assignment. All right, I'm not gonna say next show. I'm gonna, I'm gonna let y'all know, but it's gonna be a show this week. Write out five tiers because I think you can do that. I think you can do it. Who are your five tiers? Right? I mean, your first your your mount your your first tier may not be the same as mine. Write out your five tiers for the New Orleans Saints. And I'm open up the phone lines, and I'm gonna let you uh, talk about it. how is that? Because I think I think this is like it's not as it's not as easy as I thought it would be. Somebody said, "Where Teddy B?" <laughs> I like Teddy, but uh, uh, mm, I don't think he top. I don't think he top five tiers here. Uh, who is Martin Anderson? Oh my goodness, man! The the best field goal kicker. Probably in NFL history, one of them. Well, you know, he, you know, you got to put Adam Vinatieri up in there, Justin Tucker. But yeah, man, before you had like uh, Justin Tucker and, and, um, and uh, Vinatieri, like, yeah, Morton Anderson was that guy. More than that, like, people were mad when Morton Anderson got traded to the Falcons. I mean, when he left and went to the Falcons, I don't know if he got traded or he ended up leaving. Thomas Morris did. Thomas Moore did like deserve some consideration. Man, I know you ain't leaving Traquan Smith season coming off the list. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> y'all just y'all just being funny. Not Brandon Browner. But I'm serious, man. Crave five tiers. I'm I might do this. Like, I'm serious, man. I might put a I might put five tiers up here and um probably post that on social media, man, just to get get some some feedback on this. I'm asking it like I'm gonna do an episode. I, I will do it in, in an episode at the end of this week, or going like the first show that I do next week, and we're gonna talk about five like the your five tiers, right? So y'all know each tier like has four people on, right? Four players, all right? So make sure that you uh you know get your tiers together, not like you know actual tiers, but you know your, your five tiers, uh. Let's see. My bad. Uh, Y'all know I was born in 94. Yeah, I mean, but, yeah, Martin Anderson was that guy, man. Martin Anderson was that guy. Uh, Say what y'all want, but the big three of Brooks, Horn, and Deuce uh, is the best Saints big three. You think so? You think so? You don't think? Man, that that's, that's, a, that's a strong statement right there. Brooks, Horn, and Deuce. I uh, Drew, Pierre, and Coaston. Drew, Mark Ingram, Alvin Kamara, and Mike T. Ah, man, I, that's that's a tough one right there. That's a tough one. I don't know, man. I mean, they were a big three for a long time. TJ, you showing Willie Rope? I, I, man, some disrespect. How am I? Ta- how am I showing Willie Rope some disrespect? I put him at the top tier. I said Drew Brees. Cam Jordan, Ricky Jackson, and Willie Rofe. That, that's my that's my Mount Rushmore Saints right there. Like that, that's my that's my yeah that's my Mount Rushmore. No, nah, never disrespect the you know never disrespect Willie Rofe. He definitely he definitely at the top. 
I got all time disappointment team. <laughs> Jason Dave. Oh man, we, look. You talk about tears. You know what I mean? <laughs> For disappointment. I mean, Cam Cleveland. <laughs> I mean, Boo Williams. Um, uh, Jason David. Fred Thomas. You know, Fred Weary. Who else I'm talking about? Uh, Andre, uh, Andre Hastings. <laughs> I mean, come on, Sean Dawkins. I can, look, I can go all day and night. Danny Warfel, the Billy Joes, both of them. How many teams can say they had two Billy Joes on their team? <laughs> and they both were playing with each other. Billy Joe Hover, Billy Joe Tolliver. I mean, Todd Bauman. Do I need to go on? Huh? I mean, LaCharles Bentley. Do I need to go on? <laughs> I mean, who else, who else do I, I need to uh, come up with? I mean, Kerry Collins, somebody already said it. I mean, somebody said to Bucky Jones, but he was like, he was way past his prime around the time. Same. I mean, Ashley Ambrose. <laughs> All right, where, where we at? Where we at, man? Stanley Jean Baptiste. I mean, yeah. Y'all already know, I man. Look, we can go all day and night with some, some, of, the, some of the duds. Not too many studs. And that's the reason, like I said, it goes back to what I'm saying. It goes back full circle to what I'm saying. The reason why I feel like Archie Manning is looked at and admired and, and remembered as often as he as he is is because the Saints really just started in 2006 getting players that are worth having, like worth considering being all-time great Saints players. If this was like the Steelers or Philly, Giants, teams like that, like, I think some of these guys get lost in the shuffle. But once again, Derek Carr only played for the Saints one season. I mean, he and his, his stat line wasn't really lighting it up. He's the number nine, like, all time in quarterbacks for the New Orleans Saints. That's terrible. Cedric Ellis, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Ken Stabler. <laughs> yeah, I mean the snake, the snake uh was way past his prime. Way, way past his prime. Jim Everett, yeah. That didn't work out. JT O'Sullivan. <laughs> oh man, don't, don't do JT like that, man. Shouts out to quarterback school over there. Shouts out to quarterback school, man. Alex Molden, yeah. Uh Eric Allen. <laughs> Not not Eagles Eric Allen, Saints Eric Allen. Shaquan Hampton. I mean, if a tree falls in the woods and nobody's around, does it make a sound, you know? <laughs> I mean, hey. But, hey, man, regardless of the way you stay, but, yeah, man, homework assignment. Man, make sure y'all put y'all uh, top uh, five tiers together for all-time New Orleans Saints players. That, that ought to be fun to see where some of you feel uh, some of the top tier uh, New Orleans Saints players are. And we'll we'll have a show about that rather later on in the week or next week. But thank you all so much for checking out the State of the Saints podcast. Once again, for those that are new, my name is TJ Jones. I am the host of the State of the Saints podcast. And you can follow me on X at TJAY Jones 8. You can also follow me on Facebook.com. Uh, search Gumbo Pot Sports. Gumbo Pot Sports is also linked to, uh, you know, we mostly go live on here as well as uh gumbo pot uh so we talk a little bit more about other uh teams and other sports there and also check out the unapologetic podcast not sports related more about life and pop culture if you're into that type of stuff you can subscribe to that channel youtube.com search unapologetic podcast previous episodes available on apple podcast spotify iHeartRadio, and anchor fm and uh, i really do appreciate you all's time you take care have a good morning, noon, night, whenever you're checking out this podcast. Like always, all I got to say is, who that? Thank you for listening to my daddy's podcast. Hey, don't let these tears fool you. It's all dog around this mug. I'm good. <laughs>